<laughs> Never really gets much of a laugh, that joke. So it's a bit of a one's a bit near the knuckle. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the thing is, as well, is you can't really replace jokes. You know, you can't rub Braille out, so I wouldn't be able to replace any of the jokes. I'd just keep adding more jokes to different parts of my anatomy. You know, like my arms, my legs, my penis, if it was a really long joke. <laughs> I'd send you a dick pic later on. Uh, no, that wasn't a joke, it was a statement. Uh, statement. <laughs> Uh, come and see me after the show if you are interested. Uh, I'll be warned if we do end up making love, you will be in for a bumpy ride. Uh, my clock is covered up here. <laughs> for those of you who like a bit of rough, I'll drive you dotty. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I uh, I read Brill, and so I can't. I can't. I'm gonna, I might. Uh, I might go through this uh, this poem uh, that I uh, that I that wrote actually. Something completely different to what I expected to, to be doing. But uh, this this came upon me when I was. What what's going to happen is, by the way, if, I, if I'm rubbish. As a conciliatory prize, I think we should have Iona up juggling wine glasses at the end of the night. <laughs> but uh, what, this, this poem came to me when I was, uh, I was in a dentist. Sorry, in the dentist surgery, by the way. This is not me talking about having sex with the dentist. That's not what this poem is about. I haven't written a poem about having sex with the dentist. Uh, not because I didn't. It's just because a few things rhyme with dentist. <laughs> but uh, I was... Uh, I just put my... I was, I was sort of in the reception waiting area. And I put my hand down. And uh, a piece of wet, recently discarded chewing gum wrapped itself around my finger. And uh, I did what anyone would naturally do in that uh, situation. I, I shook it off. I wish I mean I got rid of the chewing, chewing gum, not started masturbating. And I, uh, I wrote a poem. And I'm going to do it for you uh, right now. Uh, from the perspective of a piece of chewing gum, um, see if you can uh, work out, by the way, what this is a metaphor for and uh, uh, what the hidden subtext really is. And then let me know so I'll see a bit more <laughs> arty and fancy. A piece of chewing gum stuck to the underside of this chair. How does it feel to be stuck there? Is your life filled with utter despair? Is your life hollow, empty and bare? Or how did it feel, I wonder, when you were being masticated? Were you down in the mouth when you were down in the mouth being moistened and elasticated? Or was that the apotheosis of your existence? Did you chomp at the bit to be chomped? Could you hardly hack it waiting in a packet for that sweet teeth and tongue romp? How did it feel, a serious poem is my friend, how did, how did it feel I wonder when you were wrenched asunder, pulled from the packet from your sisters and brothers, your sibling hubba bubbers, do you miss those others? Now, I don't know, I, I don't know how you view this place, because you don't have a, a voice, you don't have a face, maybe you're at peace, chewing gum, peace, maybe you feel a sense of blessed release, or do you silently fume? Jealous of those foods that people actually consume. Does it leave you feeling empty and hollow, knowing that you'll never experience a swallow? Was back to the previous comedian there, isn't it? <laughs> or are you content that you've never spent hours in a stomach being dissolved in acid? And of course, you haven't heard a word I said. Maybe it's a relief for you that you've never slid down to the bottom as a poo and lay ignominiously in a loo. I mean, what kind of a life would that be for you? So maybe you're the lucky one. Because when all those other foods have been and gone, you're still lying there on the underside of this chair. Thank you.